What's up everyone, it's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. That was called a strike. Umpires are umpiring again. Padres fans, they gotta be swinging at the air after that was called strike three in a pivotal moment. The Rockies, they may or may not have the worst contract in all of baseball, and if it's not the worst, it's gotta be top three. Vladdy Jr., he's so back. But did his team come away with a W against the division rival Orioles and the Cruises? They went crazy last night. Ellie went yard and O'Neal, he almost went four 70 against his former team. Yeah, O'Neal, he was on the Dodgers. We're going to talk about all of that and more in today's MLB recap. And don't forget, recap is presented by SeatGeek. Use code FUZZY to save 20 bucks off all of your tickets. And if you like daily fantasy apps and you have not downloaded Underdog Fantasy, my code FUZZY gets new users a $250 bonus cash credit. New specials every single day. Don't miss out. Code FUZZY on Underdog Fantasy. Chris Bryant is on the IL again. At this point, I kind of feel bad for the guy because it's not like he's asking to get injured. We have have to keep in mind he signed for almost 200 million dollars before the 2022 season since that point he's only played in 146 games so not even a full season yet and since last year he's hitting 220 with a 74 OPS plus he's making 28 million dollars a year until 2028 Rendon I still think that his contract takes the cake for the worst contract in baseball right now Giancarlo Stanton before this year was in that conversation Patrick Corbin Steven Strasburg but Chris Bryant right now he's in the conversation for the worst third base contracts of all time. Let's see if the Rockies could steal a W against the Cardinals last night. Michael Tolia, he got recalled. He's back on the big league squad. He had a nice day. So he advances Jake Cave to third base. And Chuck Nasty, he beat out the double play for an RBI. They actually overturned the call. Brenton Doyle, he took over in the fifth inning. He singled. He then stole his 15th bag. Make it 16 bags. Tolia, he nearly laced an RBI double down the line. He still gets an RBI, but Goldie, he snagged it. It's an RBI ground out. Gray, he spiked a pitch so a third run scores for Cal Quantrill who tossed five shutout just kidding Matt Carpenter tagged him just kidding again Michael Tolio put on the moon shoes and stole a home run from Matt Carpenter so Cal does in fact go five shutout the only thing is as soon as he left uh, Colorado airmailed a throw Nolan Gorman comes home to score and Michael Ciani he knocks in the second run so St. Louis they're knocking on the door Gorman's up as the winning run and Kinley he got him on an off-speed pitch the Rockies do steal a W all right I'm just gonna get this game out the way I'm sorry White Sox fans but the White Sox gave up 14 runs during their 14th consecutive loss. What even is this franchise? Jaron Duran with a lay kick is not fair. He's unlocked a newfound power level. Rookie Sadon Rafaela drove in two more. He's almost up to 40 RBIs. He's not done yet in today's game. And Manuel Valdez, another home run. He's got three home runs over the last five or six days. Connor Wong, Dom Smith, Connor Wong again. They all had RBI singles. It's like nine to nothing. There's Sadon again. He makes it double digits. That's his 36th RBI on the year. Tanner Houck, he did Tanner Houck things. He had a no no through five. He had five strikeouts as well. He ended up with nine strikeouts. Jamie Westbrook, let's go. He cranked his first home run. Remember, he spent 11 years toiling in the minor leagues before he got called up a few days ago. He got his first base hit two days ago, his first home run right there. Rafaela, by the way, had four RBIs on the night. He has 37 on the year. The White Sox. What is going on? Listen, I'm a Cleveland fan, but I enjoy bantering with White Sox fans on Twitter. They're just very self-aware, and I just feel bad. I'm sorry. Cade Povich, I think that's how you say his name. He was making his MLB debut for the Orioles, and good for him. He got a strikeout in a 1-2-3 first inning. You say he made his debut years ago, and that's career strikeout number 700 for him. He tosses the ball back because he wants to keep that. Okay, cool. We got all the milestones out the way. Time to show some home runs. Flatty Jr. has awoken. That's a three-run oppo taco. He's hitting... 365 with a mind-bending 445 on base percentage over the last month. Ali, he broke out the boomstick as well. He's got three home runs in his career versus Yusei. Cade Povich, he tried to go for six innings, but he ran out of bullets, and those final two runs were credited to him. So six earned runs, five base hits, and four walks. Not not great, not great. But what does suck is that Ali, he blasted off for the second time. He's hitting 307 with 12 home runs as a catcher. Ryan O'Hearn, he launched one as well. That two-run home run made it a one-run game, but the six allowed by Povich and the pen, that was way too much to overcome. You say he was great, by the way. Six innings, just one run on that home run to Ali in the sixth inning. Toronto, they've won two in a row. They're 30 and 32, so they're fighting desperately to get back to 500. So are the Cubs and the Reds. Ellie De La Cruz, he answered Seiya Suzuki's two-run home run, 
with a little anything you can do, I can do, but better. Ellie Slump, I think it's officially over. He has 11 home runs and 32 RBIs, which would be a great full season for most people on planet Earth. The Cubs are an even 31 and 31. So Morel, he's trying to make sure they get back over the hump and over 500. That's a 500 record, by the way. That's a two-run home run. This dude is so much fun to watch, but Hunter Green provided all the pop with a 97 middle middle fastball directly down the middle. And is this another Uno reverse card? It is. India and TJ Friedel, they reclaim the lead with a few base knocks. Friedel with a double. He has been so good ever since he came back from injury. By the way, that was off the six foot eight Luke Little. That is the best oxymoron in baseball. How are you, Luke Little, but you're six foot eight? The bullpen for the Cubs fell apart even more so. They had walks galore. Jonathan India was handed another RBI. That was a free RBI. And Will Benson's two run single pretty much put a bow onto this one. The Reds, they won five games in a row. They're 30 and 33. The Cubs, they're now 31 and 32. CJ Abrams went yard. Okay, that's pretty fun. So did Lane Thomas. They make it back to back home runs. They show off their powers, but their powers are not as strong as mine. You guys know that I am. I have a power to reverse jinx. It's one of my best traits. I put out a tweet that the Braves had two hits over their last 15 innings, and I kid you not, I'm not joking. Seconds later, Adam Duvall socked a two-run home run. People at the game who have my notifications turned on on Twitter said that right before the pitch was thrown, my tweet hit their phones, and from there, the reverse jinx completely took over. By the way, I'm being facetious. I don't think I'm that important. I don't actually think I have powers, but it is kind of funny how it consistently happens. Atlanta, they went off for five runs on seven hits over the next 20-ish minutes. Austin Riley dunked in a base hit. Ozzy Albee scores. And Marcel Ozuna, he punished a mistake pitch for a long two-run home run. 442 feet for his 18th. He's hitting 312 with 55 RBIs. Rizel, he closed it out for a 16th save. So who do we call out next? Who deserves a reverse jinx? Honestly, it's probably got to be the Twins the next time that they face the Yankees because Twins fans, they thought maybe it would be a good day for Lopez and the boys, especially after Correa went yard. But if Trent Grisham is going yard off your ace, you probably just got to change the channel. Now, Christian Vasquez did tie it up like 13.2 seconds later, but Pablo Lopez, he walked three consecutive hitters. Glaber said, hey, thanks, man. Glaber smoked a 575 foot home run the other way. Definitely not a cue shot down the first baseline. So he gets two RBIs. The Yankees, they went easy. But ask any Yankee fan. They still felt defeated because Juan Soto, he left the game with forearm pain. That is never good. And I wasn't watching the game live, but I saw this on my Instagram. I legit thought that Soto had moved on from life. I got really scared. The Yankees, they do win again. They're 6-0 versus the Twins this year. And here's what Juan Soto had to say after the game. He's playing it off like he's going to be okay. Where specifically does it hurt you? My forearm. It's not any specific activities. It's kind of it's kind of funny that um, it doesn't hurt me whenever I throw or hitting. It's more like soreness that I feel with any any kind of move that I make with my arm. But definitely don't stop me for anything, anything baseball wise in like in the field. Dodgers were not cool at the first two games of this series, and Freddie proved that on one swing. Freddie went lefty lefty for a three run home run after Mookie and Otani got on. Having those three guys at the top of the order is just not fair. Like Freddie's kind of been an afterthought despite the fact that he's hitting 294 with eight home runs. Now both teams scored a few more runs, so it's 4 2 LA. No, it ain't. Nick Gonzalez, they call him Nicky G. He leads the National League in RBIs since being called up. 22 RBI since May 10th. Teoscar, he continues to be one of the more ridiculous six hitters I've ever seen. Probably since Kyle Tucker was a six hitter his first few years with the Astros. LA put up two more and another three. Mookie made it a five run inning on his 10th home run. The Dodgers ran it up to 11, but I'm going to skip to this. O'Neal Cruz, he was signed by the Dodgers at 17 years old. And if you guys don't remember, he was traded to Pittsburgh in the trade for Tony Watson back in 2017. So at one point, the Dodgers had a young Jordan Alvarez and a young O'Neal Cruz, and they both got traded for relievers. 462 feet at 117.7 miles an hour. O'Neal Cruz bashed a three-run tater. Pittsburgh, they're trying to mount a comeback, but Alex Vesia, he said, nah, that's not going to happen. He unleashed a vicious yell after he struck out the side in the final inning. The Dodgers, they're one win away from the 40-win club. Brian Wu, um, yeah, your team just let you down. So in my opinion, buddy, just do it all yourself. And that's exactly what he did. He dialed it up to 96 miles an hour to get Geloff looking. And this sack fly in the third was all that Wu needed. Cal Raleigh stole a base. Cal was then waved home on a Mitch Garver single. So Brian Wu got another insurance run. By the way, JP Sears, the starter.
starter for the A's. He actually wasn't that bad despite taking a tough L. He had eight strikeouts over six frames. He's been very, very good for over a month now. Brian Wu went six innings again, another shutout, and this is just getting silly. He has a 1.07 ERA. Three of his last four starts have been six innings without allowing a single run. Mitch Garver, we call him Garf Sauce. He gave his pen an insurance run. Ryan Stanicky earned his fourth save, and Seattle, they improved to five games over the Rangers for first place in the AL West. Cleveland showed some rare defensive miscues early on versus the Royals. Andres, he whiffed a Michael Garcia base that should have been caught, and that is a bad back pick from Bo Naylor. Vinny Pascantino, he secured a double down the line, so Garcia, he comes around to score. Cleveland, they got that run right back, and then some J-Ram went way out. Everyone's been saying that there's a new wind tunnel in Cleveland. No, there's not a new wind tunnel. Body composition was a literal goal for the Guardians heading into the season. They're all 10 to 15 pounds heavier in terms of muscle and just body weight. They're just crushing balls now. Jose now has 17 home runs, and there is a 60th RBI. He's the first in Major League Baseball 260. Cleveland, they gave up one run, and is this another? MJ Melendez, he leapt over Bo Naylor, and did he sneak his hand in? He actually did. It's now tied up at 3-3. Cleveland, they turned a sick double play to get out of a jam. The next run is going to win. Kansas City, they're going to take it. Isbell, he singled home Frazier, and the pen for the Royals, they were insane. Five-plus shutout in relief. I think they only allowed one base hit, maybe even no base hits. James MacArthur has 12 saves on the season, and the Royals, they gain a game in the Central. They're four games back of first place. The Padres are trying to avoid losing their fifth game in a row, and they've gotten some pretty good starts from their starters. Obviously, they're starting, but Arizona came out swinging, so this was not one of those starts. Christian Walker roped an RBI double, and both A. Eugenio Suarez and Gabriel Moreno, they bashed some home runs. Suarez has been bad. Hopefully he gets going. Now the Padres did tie Higashioka. He went yard. Tatis had another multi-hit game. Lourdes, he could not make the diving play. So both Arise and Tatis score after um, the throw hit Tatis. No one was covering third base. That was kind of funny. The Padres, they returned the favor though. Corbin, he missed the home run by three inches and he probably scores anyways on this, but pro far he botched it. Corbin, he scores for the go ahead. And uh, this is how it ends. I'm sorry, Padres fans, for reminding you one more time that the umpire called strike three on a ball two inches off the plate a challenge system would be fun like maybe not an electronic umpire every single pitch but hey i get one challenge per game i think chronoworth would have used it right there so that does it for today's mlb recap i just wanted to say thank you guys so much for your support i really appreciate every single comment that you guys leave i'll catch you guys tomorrow enjoy the web gems two two oh, oh what baby. a stop by jimenez how about it your die goes into the glove ground ball over the mountain, over the glove of Povich. Cup play for Henderson. He fires the first. Swung on, ground ball left side. Grabbed by Betts. He plants, throws, bounces it twice. Scoop by. De La Cruz smooth on the backhand. Two. Grounded shortly and knocked down and grabbed there by Fulton. He fires the second. Got him. Bounces it up the middle. Newman spins, throws, got him. More Diamondback defense. Soft liner will be caught.